Hi, good evening to everyone. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. I've been talking about COVID for a while, since early 2020, focused on autoimmunity around the disease. I also pick up on important topics that I think need to be raised to my subscribers so that they are well aware of some of the shenanigans occurring across the world around COVID-19. One of them is that excess deaths seems to be an extremely inconvenient discussion. Across the world, you find that many people ignore it because they're concerned about a potential link to an elephant in the room. I've spoken about this quite often, and I like the association because what it does is that it demonstrates that when there is something really obvious that is ignored, it points to an elephant in the room knocking over chairs and it needs to be addressed. So what has happened is that Andrew Bridgend in the UK has continued to raise awareness on this and he has been put down on many times about it. But for some reason, in the past few weeks, it seems, around the 12th of April, I think they decided that they will have a debate around excess deaths. You have to be careful. This could be a trap. And you need to understand what it is that they are probably planning to do around this. So, please be aware. So, before I start explaining what I think is happening, I'll give you an important update. So, coming up in another few days is Frontiers in Immunity. Now, it doesn't sound too exciting, but it is part of the Advanced COVID-360. And this is the presentation that will represent the second part of this course that I'm doing, where I'm trying to capture as much of the research that I've done over the past four years and put it together in a comprehensive package that's relevant to COVID-19. So even in, the, in terms of the immunity, what I'm focused on is general immunity and the immune system that is relevant around COVID-19, especially with regards to the cytokine storm. So if you want to join me, register at the link below. It will be coming up in just a few days. So thank you very much for that. Let's get back to this inconvenient excess deaths debate. What made the politicians change their minds, you have to wonder. Why suddenly have they decided, yeah, okay, let's have this debate. So, Andrew Birgen, be prepared. This may be a trap. So, let's show you where the trap has been laid. Estimating excess deaths in the UK, methodology changes February 2024. And this was about the fact that the Office of uh, National Statistics went about making some significant changes to the way that they looked and estimated ex excess mortality. They were pointing out that trends in population size, aging and mortality rates accounted for by the new method for estimating expected numbers of deaths used in the calculation of excess mortality. So in effect, they came up with a different statistical model. And so instead of the previous or the current method, which uses a simple five-year average, they've changed it to a much more complex average that they use to work out excess deaths. Now, I'm not a statistician, but I can tell you that when I looked at the formula, I thought, I have no idea what this is. But this is how they calculate it. And it will come up with a number that is just very complex to understand, but it's probably there for a statistician. And therefore, they can use this to say and discuss about excess deaths. So here is what it looks like in reality. Now, before I show you the current trend, you'll have to first see what happened. They did the new method for the past as well. So this is what it looks like. So here is the, in dark blue, is the current method. This is it here, and the, the new method. And they've gone back in time. And so zero is where there are no excess deaths, minus meaning less, above meaning higher. They were looking from 2011 all the way to 2019. 
And you can see here that largely they trended along, but you can start to see a split out in terms of dark blue. So it was higher using the old method and lower using the new method up to 2019. So the first good news is that they have got something here, which is a comparison for the previous times. But again, the question is asked, well, why did you make this change at this point when there is a question about excess deaths? So how does this trend then look when we look at the current period of time? And again, this is here, the link is in the description if you want to see it. So here again, this is your zero line going through, this is above, this is below. And you can see here in 2020, both spiked with regards to COVID-19 in 2021, around the Delta wave comes down. Well, no, this is probably more the Delta wave. Then in 2022, it remains above the zero all the way through. And then based on their blue line, they're saying here that this has now come down below zero. So if you are using the blue line, it's still above. And this is the previous method that was used that was causing the question around excess death. So this is where I think the trap has been laid. And one has to think very carefully as to what is happening. So look at this again. So this now is deaths registered weekly in England and Wales, ending the 29th of March, 2024. So this is just about a couple weeks ago. And when you slide down this here, you can now see what it is that they are doing here. So this is weekly deaths. And you can see this is January, 2023. And the blue mark here represents the expected deaths. So in January, 2023, it was above it. And then gradually it's come below it. And based on what they can say excitedly, 29th of March, 2024, it is based on the new method of uh, calculating it significantly below the expected mortality. This is the trap. Because what they will say when they come to this meeting is say, well, actually, there is no excess deaths. When we look at it and look at our statistical methods that have been approved, excess deaths are down. So when you have the debate, they can genuinely say, there is nothing to see here. That's the trap. Now, I genuinely don't understand why they're not concerned about excess deaths. Because many of these people were involved in decisions with regards to lockdowns. Is it possible that that could be a contributing factor? Yes. Maybe it led to obesity, people drinking more. Um, why wouldn't you want to know that? Why wouldn't you want to address it? I think that the issue lies right with the elephant. It seems that because there was a mandating around the elephant, if there is an issue, everyone involved in pushing that through is in theory liable, not just companies, but governments, individuals, people who promoted it. Nobody seems to want to know. I understand that, and I can see why people are anxious, but there is a problem. This is not going to go away, and I'll tell you why I say that. Again, I did this um, point a little bit um, recently. Take a look at this. This is from Statista, and this is looking at the number of economically inactive people due to long-term sickness in the United Kingdom, and this was up to January 2024. This represents 1993. It went up to a peak here in about 97, stayed there, gradually came down to about here, which is 2019. And then it does this dramatic rise to a level that we have not seen before. And this is in the thousands. That is 2.8 million who are economically inactive. We're talking about working age people. Here's the problem. There clearly is something going on. So it's one thing to say that there are no excess deaths, or you're arguing that there are no excess deaths. But I'm telling you, there are a lot of people who are sick. And sick people die. 
And based on that trend, no matter how many methodological changes that you use, you will not be able to hide this kind of number. Again, look at it. This is unprecedented. We need to understand what in the world is going on here. This started from 2020. Some of it was COVID. But beyond that, with Omicron, that doesn't make sense. And so, therefore, it means that there is an issue here that needs to be addressed. As I said to you, there is an elephant here. And I, I can understand the reasons why people in power don't want to consider the elephant. But genuinely, if you are interested in the health of your population, and you are seeing that more people are getting sick, more people are dying, if it could be possible, this is a point, I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying, if it could be possible that this is relevant and this is part of the reason why this is occurring, why would you not want to know? Is it more important for people to save face and to feel safe, not caring? Because remember, you know, the people who are affected here are not just random people. These are your friends. This is your family. This is your workers, your co-workers. Why in the world would you want to ignore that if there is something that could be done? These are difficult times. And as I said, I think that this is a trap. They want to kill this discussion. They don't want it to continue. But I'm just warning them, this is not going to go away. Within another few months, within six months, those new methodologies will have to be changed again because the death numbers are going to be high. If many people are sick, just remember this, these are working age people where this is happening to. When this, whatever is causing this, occurs in the elderly, they die. But in the younger cohort, they get sick. And eventually, if you leave it alone, they will die. Excess deaths is not going anywhere. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be understood. It needs to be acknowledged. Because without acknowledgement, there is no opportunity for mitigation. It's like ignoring the cancer until it is so obvious that it is visible to everyone. Guaranteed, it will be too late to resolve. It's likely to be the same with regards to excess deaths. Let's get people who are truly interested in the health of their population leading and making the decisions about the directions that we take. Have a great evening.